These days, people put far too much emphasis on the scores given to games by journalists. These scores are often used as the sole reason to play or not play certain video games. But ultimately, the scores given to those games are opinions and nothing more. A game may get a low score from journalists at launch, but that doesn't mean that you won't enjoy it. With that in mind, I'm going to provide you with all the information you need on this game, plus my personal experiences, with some high points and some low points, and it's up to you to decide if that information makes you want to buy and play the game. I will not be telling you to buy the game, I will not be telling you not to buy the game, and I will not be providing you with a subjective score. This is All Out Gamer, I'm Echo, and this is my scoreless review for Skull and Bones. I will start out by saying that the landscape, seas and storms are simply beautiful. Some of the islands you see, the fire effects and the boats are absolutely stunning. The weather effects look good, but not incredible. And as you'll see later in this video, the NPCs look great. They're not the best thing you've ever seen, but they do look great. During my time, I experienced some stuttering, some minor frame rate drops, and one air quote bug that stopped me from being able to board my ship. But this was fixed really easily by just quitting out to the main menu and coming back into the game. And the load times are fine. They're not rapid and they're not really slow. When I played, I was averaging about 30 frames per second on the Xbox Series X, which for most games is the standard at the moment on consoles and didn't really take away from the overall experience for me personally. Anyway, let's talk about the ships. As I said earlier, the ships are absolutely gorgeous and they're really, really satisfying to sail. And watching your custom ships skip through the seas majestically is really, really satisfying and super relaxing. The actual sailing itself is like a combination of Sea of Thieves and Black Flag. And this is because you can flick between first person, sort of like Sea of Thieves, and third person like Black Flag. However, sailing is super simplistic in comparison to something like Sea of Thieves. This is because your crew does all the manual labor for you. So raising the sails, loading the cannons, all those sort of things are done automatically. All you have to do is steer the ship, choose how fast you go and choose where to shoot. However, because you can't manually change your sails or the direction of them, this does mean that at times you are fighting against a storm and going at a little bit of a snail's pace. And sometimes the audio and visual cues for the toggle don't work very well, so it's not very clear which setting you're on. And you just have to look at the, for lack of a better term, stamina bar at the bottom of your screen See how fast that's going down and you'll be able to tell if you're in full sail or half sail. Speaking of which, the stamina bar at the bottom of the screen when you are at full sail can go down very, very fast. It can be quite frustrating at times and seems like just a pointless way to extend journey times from island to island. I personally prefer Sea of Thieves' version, which is basically you control the sails and that controls the speed. If you're against the wind, that's bad. If you're with the wind, that's great. But basically, it's all in your hands. Those that like a good sea shanty or remember them from Black Flag will be pleased to know that they've returned in Skull and Bones with a vengeance. There is a lot of variety of the sea shanties in various languages. Ship customization in this game doesn't boil down to just paint and the sails. Whilst there is a huge amount of customization options, there are also special items that can give your ships perks. The schematics for these can be purchased from vendors or earned via quests and cost valuable resources. The customization options for both your ship and your character are quite extensive in Skull and Bones. And you can change the look of your character at any point in the game by simply going to the right vendor. Unlike Sea of Thieves, in which you are basically stuck with whatever you picked four or five years ago. For your custom character, you've got all the options you would expect. So, you know, you've got your hair color, your eye color, tattoos, etc. But not only that, you have a vast, vast quantity of outfits and different color combinations and different shoes. 
it's really quite good how much there is available in this game for you to choose from. However, when purchasing these cosmetics, you will notice that the vendor has several different currencies. This normally suggests that there's going to be microtransactions in a video game. However, various notices in the game do tell you that these items are purely cosmetic. There is no benefit whatsoever to buying them, so nobody will be able to pay to win. There are no cosmetics whatsoever that offer any benefits in combat. Alongside your ship and your playable character, you can also fully customize your crew. Whether you want them in rags or full deadly pirate attire, there are various options for you to choose from. The main story is interesting enough and basically starts out of you helping a pirate king take control of his region. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you too much more than that because I don't want to give you any spoilers. However, the voice acting is excellent. The set pieces are great. But of course, aside from the story, the main gameplay loop for you as a player will be gathering resources so that you can become a better pirate. Skull and Bones requires you to gather resources for almost every aspect of gameplay. From building new ships, to crafting new cannons, feeding your crew, everything involves gathering resources. And the resource gathering itself all takes place from the ship. You never leave the ship to chop down trees, for example. In fact, you will never leave your ship really at all in Skull and Bones. You will never explore islands on foot, except in settlements. Skull and Bones takes more of the approach of Sid Meier's pirates. You are the ship for the most part. You'll make most landfalls in settlements. You'll get off, do a little bit of talking, and then back on your ship. Sometimes the amount of resource gathering you have to do does feel a little bit like content gatekeeping, just in the way that, you know, you have to have these certain resources to upgrade your ship. And you have to have an upgraded ship in order to be able to take on this ship or that ship or to sail to this area. However, the resource gathering is very quick and very easy. And if gathering the resources is part of a quest or is an objective, you can mark them on your map and sail directly to them. So you don't waste a tremendous amount of time just sort of looking around for resources. The game marks them for you. So the gameplay loop is fighting other ships, doing some quests, gathering some resources, upgrading your ships, upgrading your cannons, fight some ships, do some quests, and so on and so forth. Some people might be pleased to know that hunting is a part of Skull and Bones. And you can do shark hunting with spears, much like you could in Black Flag. The resources you gather from hunting can be used to make meals that make your crew work harder during your sea voyages. And just like this, there are plenty of side quests and optional quests to keep that gameplay loop fresh. These can be found in the pirate towns or even some of the lesser known settlements for like the islanders, things like that. In addition to the vast quantities of side quests available on various islands, there are also the bounty boards where you can take on bounties for wanted high level pirates. And you can find treasure maps in both PvE and PvP combat. These can be both common and legendary variety and offer loot. The game also marks out trade routes for you. Now I didn't use this feature but it does suggest that player agency is involved and you can decide to become a merchant if you want to. Quest information is marked on your HUD, however you can toggle this off with one touch of a button. In fact, the HUD itself is very clean and tidy and not obstructive at all. It gives you a great view of the seas whenever you are sailing or a great view of the environment if you are in one of the settlements. Okay, should we talk about the combat in the game? We should probably talk about ship combat. Bottom line, if you like Black Flag's ship combat, you like Skull and Bones' ship combat. It's the exact same thing. It's fun and engaging, especially if you're fighting against multiple ships. There is a good variety of cannons for you to change up the combat as you like. Ammo isn't infinite. It must be crafted or bought from a vendor. 
and unlike Sea of Thieves, any damage done to your ship can be healed on the fly, much like you can heal in any FPS game, any RPG. You just use a repair kit and your ship goes back to full health. Mercifully, repair kits can be bought from vendors at the settlements, so there's no grinding needed to get back into the action, no microtransactions in order to buy repair kits. You can do it all with silver, which is earnable by beating ships or selling resources. Up to the point that I've played, you can't capture other enemy ships. You can board them, but it just gets you extra resources, extra treasure. You don't actually capture the ship and it sinks right afterwards. You also at this point can't hire your own crew. You just get given a crew and that's the one you work with. It would be nice to have specialist crew members that were really good at cannons or specialists that were really good at, you know, rigging to make those things bigger, better, to make your ship faster, things like that. But at the moment, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be in the game. And as you can't board enemy ships and you can't explore other islands, you can't unfortunately get your own weapons. There are no cutlasses, there are no flintlock pistols that you can get. Those are absent from the game at the moment. However, the map is absolutely huge. It's full of side quests. There's a full main quest to do if that's what you want to do. There's lots to do in terms of combat. There's lots to do in terms of customization. The gameplay loop seems to be very satisfying and perhaps these other features will be added in the future. Who knows? And that, my friends, is Skull and Bones. Did you find my review useful? Please let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. And if you buy it, good luck in Skull and Bones.